Charlie, you ready? I want you to close your eyes and take some slow, deep breaths for me. No, I know you don't, but I need a visual record of your case so that I can show it to my colleagues, remember? Okay. Come on, now close your eyes for me. There you go. Okay. I'm going to count backwards from five. And I want you to remember you're in a safe place. Five. Clear everything from your mind except the sound of my voice. Four. With each breath, allow your mind to clear and let go of your thoughts. Three. You can feel the weight of your body on the chair beneath you. Two. You're in your car now. You can feel the seat's cushion beneath your body. One. You're driving down a desert highway. It's dark, and there are no other cries in sight. Your husband's there. He's asleep in the passenger seat next to you. Now I want you to look outside of the car and tell me what you see. It's dark. Are you still driving? Okay, the, the light. The light is getting bigger now. It's, it's, it's closer. It's, it's getting closer now. Breathe. Keep breathing. Just listen to my voice. It, it, it's coming straight at us. It, 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 it's, it's, it's blinding. I, I can't. I can't okay, see. Okay, well, you try to describe no, what I'm you can see. I'm going to pull over now. Dan, 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 wake up. Stay Dan, calm. Dan, wake up. No, I don't know what's happening right now. What is going on? What is Everything. Happening? I don't know. The, 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 the light. The, 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 the light. It's all around us. They're everywhere. They're Dr. Mia Jensen, this is day one and the first video log for my clinical psychology research grant from California University. This video journal will serve as both my notes on upcoming case findings as well as supporting documentation for my research analysis by both myself, Cal Yu, and um, my fellow peers for later evaluation. The intention of my research is to investigate interview and, and as often as possible record individuals who claim to have experienced encounters with phenomenon relating to extraterrestrials, commonly UFO sightings, alien visitations, and in my opinion, most importantly, alleged alien abductions. I will attempt to formulate a strong scientific theory behind this ongoing mass psychological phenomenon of alien-related self-deception that has spanned decades, if not longer. So, with the help of filmmakers Charlie Sarah and Rex McDunn, we aim to create an accompanying documentary with the hopes of compiling footage that paints a clear narrative of the potential connections of these shared delusions that affect possibly millions of people in the United States alone. Basically, if we can find common personality traits, disorders, traumas, or even experience-based threats as to the potential sources of these shared psychosis, we can begin to explain the similarities of their common beliefs of buried alien exposures. And if we can do that, 
we can hopefully help a lot of sick individuals and the people who love them. All right, camera is speeding. Sound is speeding. Okay, and action. <laughs> All right, Rex, I don't Looking think we need to be in this shot here. Oh. All right, Mia, why don't you start the documentary off by telling us where we're going and what we're doing. Okay. Mm. We are driving out to one of the meccas of UFO insanity to document right, some of the right, many right. stop, areas. Stop, 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 stop. What? I don't think UFO insanity is the right way to start this documentary or a way to paint your research-based analysis of all of this, right? Okay. So a serious restart. We are leaving Los Angeles, California and heading to Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell has been a mecca for UFO and alien encounter conspiracists since an alleged UFO crash cover-up in 1947. Um, this will be a great place for us to start our investigation of subjects who subscribe to these beliefs. And if we're lucky, we'll get to interview some locals with personal experiences of their own. Sound good to me, Rex? Sound good? All right, let's go. Just, uh... Checking out the infrared. Looks pretty good, man. You wanna take a look? How are you feeling up there? You look a little tired. Wanna try and find a hotel soon? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just getting some B-roll. Listen, man. He wants us to stop at her father's house on the way to Roswell, right? This guy was a total UFO nut. He's the entire reason that we're doing this project. He's probably the entire reason that she's doing her study. So before she mentions it, before we get there especially, I just want to give you a heads up. Tread lightly, all right? Copy that. So, all right. Do you want anything from the rest area? Uh, just make some candy or something. What the hell is that? It's aliens! Oh, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, dude. What are you staring at? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Look at this right here. There's a, like a, a circle, like a perfect circle, a ring. You yeah. see that? Yeah, yeah, I see that. What is that? I don't know. Fireworks? Do you hear fireworks going off? It's pretty far away. I've never seen anything like that from fireworks. I don't know. It's just a giant ring, I guess, man. I don't know. Just a, just smoke. Huh. Well, I, uh, made some money for the vending machine. Wow, that's so weird being here. It's just, uh, just like going from the walk in. Wait, let me just put the light on. Yeah. Rex, you want to set up the other camera and start getting some B-roll? Mia, do you want to come back in and uh, tell us where we are and what we're doing here? What do you want me in, like, in the middle? Yeah, it's going to just look up in there. Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, this was actually my dad's house. I guess technically my house now, but... um. Yeah, I haven't been back here in years. No, it doesn't seem like it changed much. And the picture's on the mantle, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> My parents. Tell us about them. Uh, My mom passed away when I was five. She had cancer. That's when my father moved us here. And your dad? He's dead. At least I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah. Tell the story for context. We had to study if there's anything useful to us with being there. Shit, it's locked. Okay, one sec.
This is crazy. Yeah, he was he was obsessed with his client's cases and his conspiracy theories, but I I never saw him like this. Okay. Where do we even start? Look at this. Okay, so it would take us a week to go over all this, but there's actually a gold mine of material here. Names, locations, photographs, and a myriad of theories behind each reported abduction within a 200 square mile radius of this house. There's even a list of relatives of all the reported abductees. I mean, if a fraction of these leads pan out for us, we've literally got everything we need right here. Guys, this is... <laughs> I don't know, man. Honestly, I'm a little freaked out by this. I mean, what's crazy is just how much stuff there is. I mean, none of this bothers you, dude? I mean, it's all movie makeup and props. None of it's real. I don't know. Mia's father clearly spent a lot of time organizing and cataloging all this stuff that he felt was evidence to something. Yeah, his own paranoid delusions. And for us, the perfect map into this whole alien hysteria. I don't know. None of this feels hysterical to me. This feels organized. It feels calculated. Okay, let's listen to one of these tapes and show you organized and calculated. Thomas Jansen, September 10th, 2002. After leaving the patient's house today, I felt very strongly as if I were being followed. I'm not sure yet by whom, but I need to be more careful. I don't feel safe. The last few years he was alive, he'd call me to give me constant warnings of what was happening to tell me to stay away from this house and to never come back home. Oh, great. Look, Charlie, you remember how it was when we were together? I mean, he always thought he was being followed and that his life was in danger. I mean, he'd call from pay phones and only stay on for 30 seconds at a time to avoid being traced. They gave him a psych leave from his job. A psych leave. Does that sound safe to you? I mean, what if he was being followed? You know, Mia, on the tape, he said doctor. Yeah, I told you he was the professor at the University of New Mexico. Yeah, but then he also said patient. He was a psychiatrist, but he got his license taken away. And then he was teaching until his obsession got him fired from that, too. Look, my, my dad is the exact type of person this entire project is about. <laughs> what drive someone to such lengths to become so paranoid and to want to believe any of this, to need to. It's, it's insanity. What did he teach? Abnormal psychology. <laughs> Apple doesn't fall far. I'm sorry, but what exactly happened to your father? He called me almost two years ago. Um, said he was giving up, that, um, that maybe he could save me if he sacrificed himself. He said he tried to figure out another way, but couldn't. So, um, he told me he loved me, said goodbye, and, uh, reminded me to never come back. I'm sorry, Mia. Guys, let's just take a break, huh? Yeah. We saw this yesterday. Wait, you saw that? Well, something like it. No, we saw exactly this. Where? When we stopped on the way, we talked about coming here. Extraterrestrial Highway 375. Rod Taylor. Hello? Hi, uh, I I'm looking for a Rod Taylor. Who's this? My name is, is Dr. Mia Jansen. Uh, is this Rod? What do you want? 
I got your number from my father, Dr. Tom Jansen. I'm doing a documentary and study on... on... You're Tom's daughter? That's right. This is Rod. What can I do for you? Great. Uh, Rod, I I'm calling about a photograph I, I think you may have taken. It looks like a ring of smoke in the sky. Can you tell me anything about it? Yeah, I took it all right. And I can tell you quite a bit about it. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, would it be possible for us to talk for a bit? I could show you instead. Great, that'd be great. Someone's waving a light up there. Yeah, I see him. Far away for me to get a zoom in on it. It's a pickup truck. That's them. See, these guys both have guns on them. Bro, dude, fuck this. I'm turning around. Wait, wait, wait. hold on. Rod? Hey, yeah. Yeah, hi. I got a lantern, Jerry. Hey, it might seem a little awkward, but can I see your driver's license? Uh, sure. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, hello, Dr. Mia Jansen, daughter of Tom. Follow us, it's right up ahead. Great, thanks. Okay, well, this is clearly where we get murdered. You guys saw what happened to Deliverance, right? I think we're okay. I think these conspiracy theory types are always a little on edge, you know? Yeah, I'm a little on edge now myself. Yeah, no shit. You go. Set that time lapse on 15 seconds. I don't want to miss anything tonight, all right? Copy. All right. Hey. Thank you again for meeting with us. Absolutely. Your, your, your dad, your dad's a straight shooter and I respect him. He knows what the hell is really going on out here. So sure. This uh this documentary study that you're doing, are you trying to really bust things open or you just want to talk to some crazies? I think we're just asking some questions, you know? Seeing where that takes us. Well, that's fair enough. Okay. You sure are smart. Thank you, Dad. Okay, Gary, hey, dial the brightness down on those monitors because you got another camera shooting. I don't want it to just blow out where she can't see anything. Copy that. Thank you, buddy. So, um, why don't you tell us about this um, this photograph and also why you wanted to meet us here oh. in the desert in the middle of the night? You don't know where you are? Oh, my God, but this is the famous E.T. Highway. That is the infamous metal in mailbox, the most photographed mailbox in the world. And what's the significance? It's the only landmark on this highway for 40 miles. It's the mecca, the hotbed of ET activity. Thousands of people travel here a year. Why, why, ask me why. Why? That is Area 51. Look at that, we have a third quarter harvest moon. It's a special moon, it's a special night. This is the demarcation, it's the line in the sand. This is where we watch from, right? Illegal over there, right? And right up there, that's where I took that photo. And you're here? Area 51. Great. Why don't we... Let's get on it. Yeah. Ride shotgun. How about that? Gary. Yeah. Young lady wants to know if you've ever been evaluated for post-traumatic stress. <laughs> <laughs> We're not crazy, Doc. I'm not like that. <laughs> so. hmm. uh, and uh, what are you hoping to capture out here with all this? Anything out of the ordinary. And there is a hell of a lot out of the ordinary. Holy shit. What was that? Well, this is an active missile test site, like White Sands. Uh, White Sands? Oh, come on. Where they set off the first nuke in the 40s and hundreds of others before the test ban. Come on. The fireworks? That's what I think attracted them. I see. And um, are right. we at a safe distance? Well, right, right, right. Check out the monitor. Are you recording? Roger that. <laughs> what is it, a plane? It's a no-fly zone, sweetheart, and whatever that is, is flying in very high. Could it be a satellite? <laughs> Planes and satellites don't have the ability to stop in midair. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> it's just 
and they don't have the ability to disappear. Planes and satellites don't disappear. Then where did it go? It just went. And when it did, I bet it left a ring of smoke in the air, just like the photo I took. So what? A UFO then? Yes, a UFO then. And now you've seen one too. Welcome to the crazy club. Gary will get you a hat and a book of matches. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Okay, so there's aircrafts leaving marks in the sky because they're moving at such a speed that they're, what, singeing the air molecules around them? It's an explanation from two conspiracy theorists that spend their spare time in the middle of the desert filming the night sky. Yeah, a couple conspiracy theorists, which both happen to be ex-military, one of which has an aerospace engineering degree specializing in space navigation. Yeah, also two textbook examples of PTSD. I mean, both these men experienced heavy military combat situations. Now they're clearly transferring wartime stress and enemy paranoia to a new enemy that doesn't even exist. It's a collective imaginary threat. That blip on the radar was not imaginary and neither was the sonic boom, which we all heard. I mean, come on, Charlie. If there is life forms out there and they're traveling to Earth, they're not using a 68 Chevy with a 350. They're using magnets or fusion, like Rod said, or nuclear. Rex, we're talking about Area 51, right? This is the most top secret, most guarded Air Force base in the world. Anyone who caught a glimpse of the U-2 spy plane back in the day or the stealth bomber reported seeing UFOs in the desert. Exactly. So Rod could be out there recording our own experimental technology. Yeah, or aliens. <laughs> all right, let's not get insane with conspiracy theories, all right? Our job is to stick to filming. Okay. No, Charlie's right. We have to focus on the psychology and the facts behind these beliefs and their psychosis, not the conspiracies themselves behind the underlying disorders. 100%. So with that said, what's next? Uh, why don't we talk to some of these people who reported being abducted? Maybe one of them would be willing to go on record. You know? It's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for letting us film you. Uh, could you please give us your name for, for the record? Bernie Stanton. And um, Bernie, can you tell us about your encounter? You the first one? Yeah, the, the first one. <clears throat> no, um, I was in uh, White Sands in Canton. This would be my girl. Uh, romantic, quiet, you know. Got up in the middle of the night and felt really sick. Came on all of a sudden. I felt like my skin was on fire. And uh, everything around me was vibrating. So I was completely disoriented and I, I stumbled outside the tent for air. I can remember it's this light all around. It was so bright. And then what happened? Wake up in an oil field outside San Antonio, Texas, 600 miles away. No one saw or heard from me in three years, three days. <laughs> Felt like three years. And you have no recollection of what happened over that time? Nothing? No. No, not at first. Not until the nightmares came. Then I saw what happened. What they did to me. 
And what did they do exactly? Uh, you ever seen a, a frog being dissected in science class? And I'm assuming you told the, the authorities about this. Of course, I told anybody who'd listen. And? <sighs> what do you think? My girl left me, my, my parents disowned me. My friends, like everyone else, think I lost my goddamn mind. And Bernie, did you have any traumas or, or problems before this incident? <laughs> I saw the therapist, Doc. I, I went down that why you so crazy path. But the fact always remained. I was perfectly fine before the grave got me. The graves? Yeah. Them. Big eyes, thin, gray. Fucking grays. I, I see, and you told the doctors specifically about the grays. You bet your ass I did. But nobody believed me. Not until I got a call from Dr. Jansen. Your old man believed me. He sent me to see a specialist in Albuquerque for scans. My father sent you for scans. Yeah. See that? They found a piece of metal in my fucking head. But no explanation how it got there. Said I should have had brain damage or something like that in there. I don't know. Maybe I do. What do you think? That's really not my expertise, uh, but thank you. This this was very helpful. Seriously, just look at this list alone. The amount of names on here. And the notes on these patients are incredible. I mean, everything Bernie said, he had already told to my father almost word for word. Well, what do you think the next move is? Do you want to keep going through these lists, find another Bernie, do more testimonials? What about White Sands? It is the second time it's come up. I mean, we should probably see it for ourselves, right? Yeah, honestly, worst case scenario, we get some really good B-roll to support the Bernie and Rod interviews. Campgrounds? Camping white sands? Yeah. Alone in the dark, looking for aliens. What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if I were you, I'd see the hell out of white sands. And why is that? Consider it a friendly warning. Well, thanks a lot, friend. You know, in fact, I didn't this whole little investigation you're doing. Head back to California before somebody gets hurt. Listen, man, we really appreciate your concern. Now, why don't you kindly fuck off? You want to get out of here while you can. Trust me on that. Locals being locals, I guess. Oh, fuck that guy. No, seriously, fuck that guy. Well, oh, oh, my God. Honestly, I wish you get the fuck out of here. You know, let's actually get this lens away from the fire so we don't get any flare. Yeah, copy that. All right, well, let's just try to be diligent about keeping the lens clean over here. 
Oh my god, yeah. I'll put uh, UV filters on all the lenses that ought to keep all the sand out. All right, perfect. Cool. Well, let's just uh, shut this light down and see if we can catch some UFOs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mia, I'll help you with that. More? I'm freezing. <laughs> Guys, we have six hours until sunrise. We're going to be out of wood in two. Yeah, well, what can I say? I'm not rugged. That is absolutely true. Hey, 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 hey. Who wants the wine? I do. Uh, I think there's another bottle in the front seat. I'm on it. Really? If we're going to stay out here waiting for some UFO to show up, we might as well have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, get it to you. Here we go. All right, okay, here we go. Okay, okay, okay. And... Let's do the little... Uh, okay, oh, let's start on, again. Okay. Oh, here we go. Ready? No, you got this. You got All right, this. I got it. I got it. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall in a hole. All right. <laughs> hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. Dude, Turn it on. Are you serious? I want to film it. 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 Come on. finally got it right. Come on. You know what I'm saying. I'm just... Unbelievable, <laughs> man. The abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let me, let me get it. Come on, uh, make so it a good one. Right, make it right, a good one. Okay. Make it a good one. Right, I will make it a good one. I will make it. Come on, come on. Focus. Here we go. Count me in, please. Okay. One, a two, a three, a go. Cause we're falling apart just like in the star. Come out now. Come out now. It's so hard just to fall back down. Come out now. See anything? Mia, yeah. do you think your eyes were playing tricks on you? No, it was right here. I saw it plain as day. Why do you keep saying it did? Wait. The light down here? There's footprints. I told you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude, they just. They just end. How do they just end? What the fuck? Mia. Yeah. Do you think it could have been the guy from the diner? No, no. If it was the guy from the diner, dude, it that means the he... guy from the diner. Oh, maybe we should just get the fuck out of here. You gotta tell me twice, man. Fuck this. Man, why don't you try to tell us what you think you saw? I told you, I... I saw the silhouette of, of something standing on that dune. And it definitely couldn't have been the guy who told us not to come out here in the first place. And by the way, how did that guy know that we were from California and that we're out here investigating something? He either overheard us talking or he saw Mia's Cal U shirt or he saw the license plate on the car. Guys, it wasn't the guy from the diner, okay? It it just wasn't him. Why do you keep saying it? Yeah, right? I don't know. It, the, the person just seemed really thin, like a, like a really thin man or, or woman. I, I don't know. Well, what was it wearing? see any clothes. So you think you saw a naked, thin woman in the middle of White Sands? No. Listen, it was a glimpse over a campfire in the middle of the night after a ton of wine. You could have saw anything. Yeah, anything that leaves disappearing footprints in the sand? I think we had an alien sighting. I'm serious. Whoa, did you see that? See what? What? There was a girl on the side of the road over there. Shut up. No, I'm being dead serious. Oh. Do you think we should go back and check on her? Of course. What? Okay. Oh my god. This isn't gonna be the worst idea ever. Or anything. What what side of the road? <sighs> she was over there on the shoulder. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Okay. Where do you think you saw her? She was standing right there. I don't see anything, Charlie. Mm, me neither. I know what I saw. Okay, look. I propose that we turn ourselves back around and head back the way we were going. This is too crazy. Yeah, I agree with Rex. Thank you. Come on, Charlie.
Let's go. Come on. I saw a girl, guys. Look, maybe we're, we're all just tired right now. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe some weird ass shit's going on around here and you guys don't want to admit it. Rex, why don't we turn the camera off, okay? Let's just uh, take a break from all this and talk about something else. Why don't we just change the subject and, I don't know, talk about something fun. Uh, okay, uh, what wait, 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 wait. What? There oh my she is. God. Charlie, that's impossible. <gasps> We're going 50 miles an hour in the opposite direction. Dude, that's her. Rex, can you see that? Yeah, I see her, that, but that can't be the same girl. There's the wait, hell is she doing? Wait, let me turn her. Oh, she looks fucking weird. Are you okay? What did she say? I don't know. This is this is not right. Oh, I'm where, where, I don't like this, bro. Where are your parents? Are you all alone? What did she say? Charlie. Dude, this is not right. Hey, little girl, are, are you okay out there? Can I come in? Ah! What are you doing? Holy shit. Did you see her face? Rex, check on Mia. Shit. Hey, Mia. Yeah. Hey. Mia, you okay? Mia. Dude, she's not, a, she's not. I think she passed out. Hey, Mia. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. Here you go. How you feeling? Thanks. I've never seen anybody faint before. Yeah, well, I've never fainted before, so... What the hell happened back there? I just... Everything in my body was telling me we were... I don't know. Well, I do know. In danger. I admit, the girl on the side of the road was creepy. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. What do you think? I mean... Could just be freaking ourselves out, you know. Technically speaking, SPD, shared psychological delusion. Basically, that we've become so paranoid because we're now in the mindset of these these topics and these cases. It's like telling some ghost stories in the middle of the night, you know. And and then all of a sudden, everyone starts hearing and then seeing things. It's it's like a shared induced fear, basically. Are you serious? That girl was real. We all saw her. And, and what about what you saw back at the dunes? I mean, come on, Charlie. Yeah, the girl on the side of the road was weird. Yeah, she was weird. Everything about her was weird. The way she looked, the way she acted, where she was in the middle of the night. I mean, hey, fine, but how weird? Alien weird? And honestly, I don't know what Mia saw back there, if anything. Okay, what about the footprints? Rex. The footprints could have been days old. The wind could have blown them away. You know, what we saw was what was left of it. It's exactly like Mia said. We're out there, alone, in the dark. Our minds start playing tricks on us. Okay. Look, I, I didn't want to bring this up, but honestly, it's been freaking me out. When we were at Mia's dad's house, I saw a photograph of a girl that looked exactly like the girl we just saw on the side of the road. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, then I I think we should go check it out, right? Let's yeah. go back. Right, thank you. Let's go back. Here. BK Black Eyed Kid Highway 545. BK Black Eyed Kid Alamogordo, New Mexico. BK Black Eyed Kids, Sonora, Mexico. BKs or Black Eyed Kids have been reported and photographed mostly in the Southwest region of the United States since the, the early 1990s. In every case, they appear calm and in need of some sort of assistance. On some occasions, very young BKs have shown up at people's doorsteps asking to come in. These BKs are not human, at least not 100% human. Asking to come in, not 100% human. This has to be a hoax. You know, locals trying to get people going, sell 
museum tickets in Roswell, get conspiracy theorists out to White Sands. So, what, what do you think, it's a, an amusement park out there? Mia, yeah, for God's sake. We saw this. This is real. Well, why would someone be at the door? Does anybody know we're here? No. Maybe it's a neighbor? Yeah, or maybe not. Wait, Charlie. Oh, you're gonna bluff this. Right. Okay. Grab the camera. Wait, Charlie. I'm guessing it's not a wild one. Hey, 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 hey,
at your father's request, naturally. Often there are signs leading up to an abduction. Most people don't pay any attention. Sometimes these signs are so subtle, most people wouldn't even notice. And what are these signs? The, the obvious ones, uh, crop circles, smoke rings in the sky, uh, an encounter with BEKs, craft sightings, animals behaving strangely, paranormal like activity, animal mutilations, and sometimes, sometimes, it's all of these things in succession. For argument's sake, why would an intelligent entity show these signs, give warnings? We what would know. be the point? We don't know. We don't know. The, thing, the important thing right now is that we have to prove that it is actually happening. I don't know what to make of some of what we've seen or heard on this trip. Most of it you know, can be explained away, but some not so easily. And so far there are no tangible psychological connections behind the cases of the believers we've seen. Which brings us on to our next case. There's a family that Gustav wants us to meet. We'll document them around the clock in order to uncover what might be going on there, whatever they might be experiencing. Um, I mean, this is ultimately what we came out here to do, right? Fully submerse ourselves. But I do want to be mindful of not being swayed into seeing through Gustav's eyes. He is a true believer the whole case unto himself. So I guess we'll just head down tomorrow to this ranch near the border of New Mexico and Mexico and we'll see what we can get, right? Okay, let's go to bed. Okay, I guess this is it. Max, you got it? Uh, yeah. I want uh, every bond, I want everyone to follow my lead. This family has just suffered a tremendous loss and they're still under a great deal of stress, okay? Now they have, they have allowed us to document what's been happening here and they very dearly want someone to help them get to the bottom of it, okay? And having said that, be mindful. Uh, oh, and, and, and listen, uh, I think we should hold off on bringing any equipment in right away. Okay, as a matter of fact, why don't we just shut everything down? Got it. Let's do that first. Shut it down. Okay, I'm rolling and speeding. I'm rolling. Thank you so much for having us here and for allowing us to film this. Thank you for coming. Of course. Do you really think you can help? Explain what's been going on around There's here? There's nothing going on. There's some kids playing some pranks. Our entire chicken coop being slaughtered. That circle in the field, dad dying like that? Kids pranks? Well, we don't need some strangers in our house filming our business. Esta gente se debe de ir. Ellos van a causar peores. She's right, they should go. Just be quiet, please, okay? You're embarrassing me. You know, some of us still have some work to do around here. Then go do it. Hijita, hazle caso a tu hermano. ¿Cómo es posible que ellos nos puedan ayudar? I'm so sorry. Please, please don't apologize. And, uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't know if, if we'll be able to explain anything that might help you. But we are here, and we would very much like to try. All right, where do we start? I suppose at the beginning. So about a month ago, my dad woke up in the middle of the night, ran out here, ran back to the house, woke me up and was talking about this field. He said that there was something out here he wanted to show me, markings or something. Did you see them? No, I, uh, 
I thought he was just having a bad dream and walked him back to his room. The next morning I couldn't find him, so I walk out here and there he is, just laying in the middle of the field. And it looked like it had been burned flat. All of our crops were gone. What prompted him to go outside in the first place? He, uh, I asked him that and he said that he heard a humming sound, like a, a vibration all around the house. Mm. And, and no one else heard it? Mm -hmm. Did your father see anything else? anything that could explain the burnt field. I woke him up and I brought him back in the house. And to be honest, he really wasn't making any sense at that point. He just kept mumbling about bright lights and my mom and thin men. And your mother, where is she now? She passed away when I was young. I understand how difficult that must have been. Did your father say anything else when you got him back inside the house? He got so sick the next morning, we couldn't get anything else out of him. Sick? Sick how? What happened? His, uh, his skin turned red and began to bubble up like a bad burn. The next morning, all his hair fell out and then he began to bleed from his nose and his ears. He passed away two days after that. Oh, I am so sorry for your loss. Siggy, I want you to get a soil sample as well. What is it? What? The EPA and the CDC already checked everything. The EPA and the CDC were here? Yeah, they came by right after we took Dad to the hospital. They said that they sent over some guys to make sure everything was safe. And what did they say? They said everything was okay. These levels aren't toxic now, but I see out of this area. Why would they say that it was okay? Shit. I'd like to set up audio and visual. Okay, I've set up multiple cameras in this area specifically. That way I can monitor frequencies and waves. I also like the cameras inside the house. Would it be all right if we set up cameras inside your house? Uh, yeah, sure. Everywhere? Uh, I think that would be best, yes. Okay, whatever you guys think will help. Okay, thank you. Well, come. So we had about uh, 20 or so chickens in here. My grandmother used to sell eggs at the local market on Thursdays to just, I don't know, keep herself busy. But I come out here one morning a few weeks ago and they were all dead. Except not just dead. It was like they were chopped up into little pieces. Mm. Except that there was no blood, just the pieces. Did you call the police? I, no, my grandmother didn't want to. She said that we had enough fuss around here. I guess she's old fashioned, you know? Doesn't really like too much going on. And I don't think she's really been okay since my dad died losing a son. I don't think any of us have been okay. That's perfectly normal. I did take pictures, though. It just didn't seem possible. And we didn't even hear anything from the house. I've butchered chickens before, Doctor. It's never quiet or clean. When did you decide to call Dr. Bertram? Three days ago. Um, things have just been getting weirder and weirder, and, oh, I told you what my grandmother said. And what did she say? She came into my room in the middle of the night, and she grabbed my arm, and she said, it's happening again. I think the thin men are coming to take you away from us. <laughs> I know it's crazy. It's just some old Mexican woman with a bunch of superstitions and folklore in her head, but the look in her eyes, it just, it really scared me. And then she started to cry and I've never seen that woman cry in my entire life. So I went on the internet and I found a book, The Theories of the Unexplained, The Grays, The Thin Men by Dr. Gustav Burcham. Thin men. It's just like Papa and Abuela said. I mean, what does that even all mean? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's complicated. Do you think we could talk to your grandmother about what she said? Uh, I mean, I could ask her, but I doubt it. She's not really too keen on you guys being here. <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing that's the general consensus. Yeah, she'll warm up, but it's probably best if I just get you guys settled for the night. Of course. Yeah. All right, uh, so we're just gonna watch your step. All right, um, I'm gonna give you the abridged version. Did you know that 2,300 people go missing every single day in the United States alone? Yeah, it's pretty staggering, isn't it? That's almost 900,000 people every year. How is that possible? In his work, your father began to discover that he had patients who had similarities. 
some of which were uh, blackouts, gaps of lost time. Sometimes these people were even, they were reported as missing at least once at some point in their lives. And no one, no one could ever remember where they were during these gaps. Now, through his therapy, many were eventually able to process their memories and they could remember a series of signs leading up to their experiences. And some of his patients were not only affected emotionally, many of them were physically ill. Now, people, people who, uh, who claim to have had a close proximity UFO encounter. They had actual physical signs. And some of them had uh, severe or very rare cancers, which of course is, is the way that uh, our paths started to cross. My mother. Wait, wait, are you saying my father thought she had a UFO encounter? No, I'm saying your father was certain of it. And her cancer was the rarest I had ever come across in my career. Now, Thomas cautiously told me what he thought about the origin of her condition. And then after a while, uh, we started sharing our casework and we started coming up with parallels and we were trying to come up with theories. When what were those theories? Your father felt that he had found a distinct connection, a pattern of multi-generational experiences, family cases. And these patterns always led to the same eventual conclusion. Which was what? Ultimately, a missing person. I believe, and I am certain that your father would agree with me, someone from this family is going to be taken. And with the extreme amount of evidence we have here, I, um, I don't think they'll be coming back. Got everything set up. Multiple cameras covering uh, all the angles in the house. Mm -hmm. One on the outside covering the exterior. Very good, Sue, thank you. I'll show you where to plug in if you want to download the raw footage. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, listen, uh, it's been a long night. Right. I think we all should try to get some sleep. Huh? Thank you so much. I think she just had a really bad nosebleed. Oh okay, everybody, uh, let me just, please. Oh, okay, how you doing? Uh, oh, you're losing a bit of blood here, sweetie. Uh, do you feel dizzy? Um, I, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Siggy, no, I don't know. Okay, Siggy, uh, could you run downstairs and bring up some orange juice? Yes. All right. Uh, hey, should we be filming this? Uh, right? Okay, yeah, just, is my, here, bring the light in closer. Okay, so I can see. And what I want to do is I want to pull the towel away just so I can see what we have here, okay? Very slow. Uh, okay, all right, honey. All right, head forward. Head forward. Put a little pressure. Okay, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Now, what I want to do is very slowly get you to your feet, and we're going to take you to the hospital, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you, you lost a bit of blood here. They might need to cauterize your nose. But we don't know, but it's better safe than sorry, okay? All right, let's just... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. All right, everybody, everybody out of the room right now, please. Just give us a minute. Everything's fine, sweetie, don't panic. Here, let's get up real slow. Just hold on to me, real slow. That's a girl. Oh.
How is she? Oh, she's uh, she's fine. She'll be okay now. What did they say? Well, uh, it could be that her nosebleed was brought on by severe false labor contractions. Contractions? Uh, Sophia had a miscarriage. Oh, my God. I, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize she was pregnant. Well, neither did she. And apparently it's only about two months along. Is that uncommon? Not terribly, but uh, she told me that she has not had sexual relations in over five months. And there's something else. She has bruises, prints on her arms and legs. Yeah, I, uh, I think it might be best if you were to speak to her about her ordeal sure. after she's had a little rest, of course, of instead of me. Of course, yes. All right. Uh, listen, I'm tired. Everybody's. Let's go back to the motel, get a little rest before we head back to the ranch. Is that good? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank All you right. so much. Sure. I'll see you there. All right. Thanks for stuff. Do you think someone could be hurting her? Like Alex? <sighs> no. I think we should check Siggy's footage on the, on the surveillance cameras at least. See if that comes up with anything. Yeah. All right. This is it. What are we looking at? Uh, oh. That distortion. <laughs> okay, we'll just watch it again. Oh, see that? God. Oh. How are all the security cameras having distortion at the same time? Do you think it's some sort of interference with the wireless signal? I mean, it's something. The timing is curious. You want to see curious? Tell me what you see. It looks like he's being held down. That's exactly what I said. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Are you sure you're up for this? Yeah, I don't think I can be laying down anymore. No, no, tu necesitas descansar. I guess I'm staying put. <laughs> Probably for the best. Uh, Sophia, the camera Siggy installed shows that um, your nose didn't start bleeding until after you woke up. So, do you remember anything about last night? Why you may have woken up screaming like that? No, um, you know, actually, that's funny. I just remembered something just now after you asked. I was having a dream. A dream? Yeah, I was laying in our field and I couldn't move. And there were these deer standing up all around me, like six or seven of them. All of them are just staring at me. So strange. They're just staring and nothing else, but I was terrified. And I remember I tried to scream, but I realized my mouth wouldn't work. That's weird, isn't it? And then I remember this warm liquid pouring over my body. And then I realized it was my own blood. And the next thing I remember is Abuela covering me in a towel saying I was okay. Sophia, you also apparently had a miscarriage. No. Is there... No vamos a hablar de eso. Cuando los niños sin ojos aparecieron y el hombre flaco llegó, ay, es como una maldición en nuestra familia. Lo que deberíamos de hacer es rezarle a Dios para que acabe con esto. 
We're not just going to speak about it. Stop it, Abuela. It's okay. Uh, really. What is she saying? No, Sofia, no más. Dile a esta gente que se debe de ir ahorita mismo. Ellos van a hacer las cosas peor. Váyanse. I promise you. Okay, should we stop? Like, yeah, thank you. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Of course. Um, you get some rest. Thank you, Mia. Of course. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so this stuff. Uh, Sophia talked about a strange dream she had last night. Uh, she saw a group of deer standing above her. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard of that before. Deer, owls. It may be a way for the brain to try to translate something that's just too overwhelming, or it may be a way that uh, they try to make our brains forget about something that actually happened. Okay, so you absolutely believe Sophia was visited by something or someone from another world last night? Well, signs are this clear and happening at such a rapid pace? Absolutely. I mean, at this point, I think we all probably were. How? If this was really going on, how wouldn't anyone know about this? With all the technology the government has, you would think that... Well, what if they do? Then why wouldn't they do something about it or, or tell us? Well, what if they can't do anything about it? What if they're completely powerless against it? Our entire government, an entire global community, powerless. Look, look, if a comet were on its way to obliterate the Earth and all the news media got out there and they warned the whole world about it, I mean, can you imagine what kind of chaos? I mean, right up to, to the final impact, can you imagine? Yeah, uh, total anarchy. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. And, and, and if that comet were 10, 20, or 30 years away, I mean, do, uh, do you tell people about it? Do you warn society about it? Or do you watch your society and your financial institutions just completely fall apart? And people going every day and every year knowing that the clock is ticking down on life as we know it not to mention the religious implications, or do you just go along with the status quo, knowing that there's absolutely nothing you can do to affect the final outcome? Gustav, you're implying that people or, or things from another planet are here to what? Take over? All I am saying is I believe, I personally deserve the right to know the truth either way. And I believe everybody else has that same right. What do you think? Okay, if Sophia has some memory, or at least what seemed like a dream to her, um, Alejandro might have some recall of what happened last night as well. You know, how he felt while his sister was screaming bloody murder right down the hall as, as he laid still in his bed, seemingly trapped while the rest of us just ran to her. Okay, do you want to check the morning? Yeah. It's super dark out. Alex? Alex? Hey, Sophia, don't want to see you be out here for the hell is he? Alex, I, I just want to ask you something. Do you see him up there? Uh-uh. What? Alex, Alex, standing right here. What, what do you mean, where? He was right here. What? Look, what the fuck? How the fuck did he get all the way over Charlie, there? There's no way you saw him here, okay? He was He's here over a there. second ago, I'm telling you. What is he doing? He's trying to scratch the back of his head. You see that? <gasps> Just like Sophia. Shit. We have to go back in. Come on, Charlie. All right. This is insane, okay? There's wow. no way you saw him. I told Gustav about Sophia scratching at the back of her neck and also how weird Alex was acting with us. Gustav seemed really concerned. I want to check the back of Alex's head tonight while he's sleeping. What? Look, that is a terrible idea for the I, record. I can't argue with that, man. Yeah. If there's some physical evidence that we can actually point to to prove or disprove what Gustav is saying, we have to do it, right? Well, like an implant, like Bernie? 
A secondary case with a foreign object supporting some kind of narrative, yes. This is beyond the invasion of privacy we're talking about here, guys. Not to mention that Alex will never let us use this footage without his permission. Look, are you guys with me or not? Thanks. Good. Tonight, then. Tell me. don't know what to say. Just say whatever's on your mind while it's still fresh. Okay. Um, we're packing up the car and heading back to LA. Neither my thesis nor our documentary are conclusive, much less from a psychology standpoint. But um, overall, I, I do think we've captured evidence of something else entirely. not sure what we do with this or where we go from here, but we don't feel safe here anymore. Too many unexplainable things have happened on this trip, and Charlie, Rex, and myself, we've decided to go home for now. Everyone else in the house is still sleeping, so I guess we'll just call them from the, the road tomorrow to explain. I just... Uh, I just feel like I'm letting everyone down. Especially Sophia. She's more afraid than we are right now and we're just, we're just running off. All right, All right. Uh, let's just, let's just cut it. And then we're gonna call tonight, right? Okay. That's not good. What? Dude, please don't tell me this car's not starting. Is that fucking cut? Who the fuck would've done this? Wait, is everything okay? No, everything is definitely not okay. Shit. What? What the fuck are we gonna do now? I'm worried. I'm worried everything has progressed here further than is within our ability to intervene. I would advise for all of us to leave, but I, I, I honestly think it's too late now, even for that. 
Sigmund, Sigmund has captured surveillance camera video and footage of Alejandro transmitting cryptic messages, clearly not of his own volition. And last night, I discovered a bump on my neck near the posterior scaling. And with Sigmund's help, I cut into the soft tissue and there was a small metal object inside. I attempted to remove it, but it had remarkably rooted its way up into my temporal bone and actually begins to retreat when I get too close to it. I cannot even emphasize how disturbing this is. And with everything that we have seen here, and with Alejandro, I, I, I don't even know if we're in control of our own actions or if we can even trust our own thoughts to actually perceive reality at this point. I, I hope someone will see this and that you will allow this video to, at the very least, serve as a warning as to what has happened to us. Did you disable our car? Dude, what are you talking about? No, we didn't. Then who did? I don't know, man. Chill the fuck out. Yeah, fuck you, man. Fuck you. Maybe you disabled the car, Charlie. Sure. No, I did not. How do you know that for sure? What does that mean? And what are you guys doing here filming right now? Wait, what's going on? I'm sorry we woke you, Sophia. We're just trying to figure it's out. It's fine. What's, what's happening? Why are we yelling? All right, all right. Everybody, everybody, just yeah, can we sit down and we can discuss this? If you have something to say, Gustav, just say it. All right, fine, fine. Siggy was awake. He was watching the security cameras and he saw you walk into Alex's room. And we were just filming a warning video. So A warning video? What's wrong with Alex? All right. I, for one, am done listening to this bullshit and I'm not sticking around any longer. Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. Do you hear it? Yeah, you hear it. What's Shit. going on? It's probably just a breaker. Let me get a flashlight. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Nobody move. No. Oh, what is that? Listen! Oh. 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 Oh.
手伸下手。Leah, I'm gonna phone this session for a record of your case. Leah? Okay. For the record, this is Mia Jensen, patient number 347. Mia, could you tell me one more time in your own words about your experience? The footage. Charlie filmed everything. The truth. What was that? Could you speak up a little? What happened to your friends that went missing? You mentioned Charlie. Charlie Sarah, right? Where is he? Who took him there? Who's coming? No. I'm coming. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. They're already here! Thank you.